Have you ever seen a small baby when it's born? You were all there, or should we say we were all there once upon a time. You see the baby, how much it's in need of assistance. It is totally dependent on other people. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates a person. Why? Because He wants him to remember his origins. He can't turn by himself. He wets his nappy. He does number two in his nappy. And he can't clean himself until his mother comes and takes that nappy off. He wants to drink. He's hungry. And he can't move or drink until his mother feeds him. And then after a while, that same little baby becomes older and older. And then he starts thinking that he's something special. And then he forgets his origins. And he starts to think that he is it. He is the man. Forgetting his origins. And the older that he gets, the more independent that he regards himself. And when he starts going to the gym and pumping some iron, and his and he starts taking horse growth hormones, so he bloats. Then after a while, he thinks that he is something really special. And come summer day like this, you won't find him in here. Illa mashallah, he's on the street with his t-shirt on. And then a time comes that that very same person becomes old. And he becomes bent back. If he reaches that age and he walks with a stick and when he wakes up in the morning, all his bones hurt. All those bones hurt. And then a time comes that he becomes ill, sick. And he can't move without assistance again. Why? Because Allah made him dependent. Then Allah made him independent. And then an age came that Allah made him dependent again. And then he lies upon his bed and he can't move. And Malik al Maut is sitting upon his head and it is waiting to take out his ruh, his soul. It's waiting. He sees it. Nobody around him sees it. And he sees the reality. You know, the other day I was speaking to somebody who was really seriously ill. I went to meet them in hospital and they thought they were going to pass away. But Alhamdulillah, Allah gave him recovery. And, he, and you know what he said to me? He goes, Mawlana, it's not easy dying. It's not easy to die. But the reality is that everybody here, me, you, and the millions who came before us, came and they left this dunya. If you go into the graveyard, and this is why the Prophet wasallam said that you should go to the graveyard and you should visit the graveyard. Because it reminds you of death. Look at the tombstones. It will say 1835, 1825. It shows that these people spend more time in the grave, under the grave, under the earth than upon it. And then a time comes, he's lying in his bed and he sees Malikul Mawt. And if Allah gives him, if he's been a good person in his life, Allah gives him the tawfiq to recite the kalima. And if not, if not, then he leaves this dunya. And that very same person, now they give him a bath. He can't bathe himself anymore. They give him a bath. And the water shouldn't be too hot or nor should it be too cold. Because he feels it. And then that person, imagine it, imagine it. Because it's going to happen to every single one of us. 
But sometimes we get so deluded with this dunya, we forget. A time comes, they dig a ditch six feet deep. And they put you in it. And then they put the sand over you. And you are all by yourself. Imagine it. Because as I said, it's going to happen to every single person. And then the only thing which will remain with you in that grave is your good actions. The only thing. Your muscles, your money, your car, your house, your friends, your children. Everything will remain behind. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, only one thing will remain with him. And that is his good actions. And if you have good actions, they will save you. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, that the grave is rawda in the riyadh al jannah is a garden from the gardens of jannah when a person is placed in the grave the grave says to that person out of all the people walking on the face of this earth you are the most beloved too and now you have come to me you will see how i deal with you how i encounter you and it opens up as far as the eyes can see and windows into Jannah open. And then there will be any other person who lived this life because you either go to Jannah, you either go to Jahannam. Who had lived his life, but he did whatever he wanted. He womanized, he whined and dined, and he actually believed that he's gonna kick 50. And when he kicks 50, he's gonna grow a beard and do Hajj and go to the masjid. But there's no guarantee. There is no guarantee. And he is put in his grave all by himself. Nobody with him. And the grave will say to him, out of all the people walking on the face of this earth, you were the most despised in my eyes. You were the most despicable in my eyes. And then the Prophet Sallallahu said, it will squeeze him. It will squeeze him. And then the Prophet ﷺ thrusted his fingers in one to the other. And he said his ribs will go into each other like this. This is how it will squeeze. Him. And the only thing, the only thing which will suffice and safeguard you on that day is your actions. Actions. And the Prophet ﷺ said that a person when he now you look at we become independent and we think we are something special. But the Prophet ﷺ said, when man will be brought in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will be like a buzzard. You know what a buzzard is? Have you ever seen a calf when it's born and it tries to stand up and it falls down again? And then it stands up and it falls down again. The Prophet ﷺ said, when man will come in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment to give account for his action. He will be like a buzzard. His legs won't be able to hold him. He will try to stand and he will drop. And then he will stand again and he will drop. And he will start like a little calf. And he will do this. And he will do it again and again. And really look how often we delude ourselves. Believing that we are something special. But on that day, every man will know how special he is. The biggest gangsters, the biggest drug dealers, the biggest macho men, the bouncers will know their reality. Their reality, they will know. Or oh, man, when he will see his actions on the day of judgment, the Prophet ﷺ, his evil action, he will cry. He will cry until his tears dry up. Tears dry up. And he will have no tears left. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, he will still cry. But he will cry tears of blood. When he will see the reality. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ defined it as what? Yawmul Hasra. A day where man will have remorse. He will have remorse. Why didn't I spend my life in the worship of Allah ﷻ? In the worship of Allah ﷻ. In the worship of Allah ﷻ. Oh, oh, oh.